Hello everyone. So welcome to today's webinar. Hopefully you can all hear me and there's no odd random glitches. Um, so thank you all for joining. We're going to cover today the Comscope Ruckus Unleash and Smart Zone webinar. So my name is Alex Claro. I'm the head of technical here at Perdicom. Um, so if you've got any questions, feel free to uh, pop in the question box and ask any questions um, and I'll get some at the very end of the webinar. So we're going to cover the Ruckus Unleashed overview. You can have a quick demo of Ruckus Unleashed and what it can do. You can have a smart zone overview as well. Um, technology comparison. So as we go through the webinar, we'll see the different demos and we'll do a live demo with a Q&A at the very end. So Ruckus Unleashed overview. So it's designed to be, so Ruckus Unleashed is designed to be a high performance, simple to use, affordable, way to manage your access points. It's kind of the entryway into Ruckus. And from there, you can then step up to either Ruckus Cloud or the Ruckus Smart Zone platform. So the reason why Ruckus Unleashed is really compelling is it's got a built-in controller. You don't need to have another bit of tin sitting in your rack, acting as a controller. A controller, will, the AP will act as a controller for you, meaning you don't need to invest in separate hardware and separate support licensing. You just need to make sure your Unleashed platform has a license effectively. It also allows you to manage your network from anywhere via a phone or web browser. You can use a niche multi-site manager if you've got multiple sites that you need to manage. Or you can manage up to 10 from the Ruckus Unleashed app, which is on the App Store on iOS and Android. As we all know, Ruckus is really fast and really reliable, so it gives you the ability to deliver fast and reliable Wi-Fi experience to all of our customers, while safeguarding their client connectivity and productivity with smart redundancy. So both Ruckus Unleashed and Ruckus Smart Zone have really unique ways to fail over. As long as you have more than two Ruckus Unleashed APs in your network, they'll automatically have a master and slave, and they'll fail over instantaneously between each one. If you're on the Smart Zone platform, it does the same thing again, except that the Smart Zone relies on an active, active platform, meaning that the licenses are shared between all controllers, and that if one controller fails, the other controllers are ready active and ready to take the load, and they actually split the access points evenly between them. So um, you, you could actually lose an entire cluster and then have a single smart zone running and you'd be fine. So to make sure that we have um, re resilience at our very core, we also leverage our best in class Wi-Fi with performance. So we use Beamflex. So Beamflex is a method of effectively transmitting directly towards a client. If you imagine a torch, it's a directional antenna. With our APs, we can force them to do a directional pattern towards any device, no matter the orientation, whether it's horizontal or vertical, we can send a signal that's catered to that device independently. And that's regardless of whether we're using 802.11a, b, g, n, a, c, or even Wi-Fi 6 and AX. And then we have our channel fly. So channel fly is the best in breed because it actually bandwidth tests every single channel. And to do that, it puts all clients onto those channels. So when you first enable channel fly, be quite honest, for the first day, it's a little bit annoying because the channels keep changing. But after a day, it's absolutely rock solid. It calms down. And then it knows that if that channel becomes saturated, it will then move to another channel, which isn't saturated, to ensure you always have the best performance. Now, we also have our easy management. So Rux Unleashed had a recent update, and it's quite a big update, which means that you can actually manage up to 128 access points without a single controller, just on the Unleashed platform. It allows you to deploy a seamless experience. It's actually allows you to also integrate with CloudPath as well as securely onboarding users to any guest network using GuestPass, which is Ruckus's proprietary system, or through social login like Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and I think even Microsoft now. We also support Wi-Fi for EU. So if you've got any projects where the EU were funding the Wi-Fi and the requirement was that you had to be a Wi-Fi for EU compliant vendor, well, Ruckus can do that with Ruckus Unleashed. And we've got quite a few um, projects going on um, in the north of the country, which is using exactly this. And then we come to our review and our overview. So we can support up to 1,024 clients per Unleashed group. And we just need to have two access points. That's the minimum requirement. We have a master AP and a slave AP, which can then delegate between each other. And that manages all the network. So your master and slave AP basically tell everyone else what to do, similar to how a controller functions. If you have a brand new Unleashed AP out the box and you've already got an Unleashed network, well, that's fine. Just plug in the AP. It'll automatically join the Unleashed network with no additional configuration required. It would join that Unleashed network, download its configuration, and just function. We then have our product overview. So 
Um, with the recent update to support 128 access points, all the Wave 2 access points are supported in Ruckus Unleashed and only the Wave 2 access points are supported. So that means we can either go from you know, a small hospitality deployment using a H320, or maybe we want to use a H510, which has PoE out, four Ethernet ports. You know, it's, a really, it's a really heavy AP designed for hospitality. We then also have our baby of the range, our R320. So this is designed for you know, a small room, like 20 people connecting to it. Um, it's got a single Ethernet interface. If you need a little bit more than that, so you're going to 30, 40 users per room, then you'd be looking at the R510. It's got dual Ethernet interfaces. It's designed to have more client capacity. And then we go to our R610 over here, which is our 3x3 AP. This is designed for, again, high-density environments, just like the R710 is as well. Now, the difference between the R610 and the R710 is, quite frankly, the R710 is a 4x4 access point. Now, you may be wondering, well, the R710 and the R750 are the same then? Yes and no. They're the same in the terms of the amount of spatial streams they have. However, the R750 is actually the entry point into 11AX. So you have high-density AP, which supports Wi-Fi 6, supports multi-gigabit, has multiple Ethernet ports as well if you require them, and is kind of the flagship at the moment for Ruckus on the AX platform. There is one AP that's not listed on here, um, but it's due to be released imminently. Um, I think we can actually take orders of it now, which is called the R650. And that's the baby brother to the R750. And that is, again, a Wi-Fi 6 AP. It's just a 3x3 AP. So we've got lots of different options for you. Feel free to get in touch, and we can actually do any, any plans that you need, any documentation around it, and actually start designing networks for you through heat maps. We then have our outdoor overview. So we've got the T310 range, which provides you either um, a nominally directional, 120 degree sectorized, or a speciality 30 degree narrow beam sectorized AP. We also have our T610. Now our T610 and T710 are actually identical to one another. The only difference is that um, the T710 supports a SFP module input and the T610 doesn't. So if SFP requirement is, a re is needed for your deployments and you're looking to use BPON, then you'd be looking at the T710. Or if you want to go to Wi-Fi 6, we have an outdoor AP, the T750, which is our first outdoor Wi-Fi 6 AP at the moment, supports SFP, supports GPON technology, supports DC and AC power. It can also power you know, a CCTV camera as well if you need to, because it does have a PoE output in addition. We then come to the smart zone overview. So the smart zone is really a powerhouse. It's, it's the flagship's controller in our range because it allows you to do so much. So whether you have a single controller or you've got multiple controllers for resiliency, it kind of fits every deployment scenario. So we no longer need to deploy a separate standalone network management system to manage all of our switches and APs. We can do it through a single pane of glass. And that's actually what we do at Perdicom. We use a single controller to manage our uh, switching and APs through a single pane of glass. Now our controllers, each controller actually supports up to 150 connected clients. Now if you have uh, three or four controllers in a cluster, we actually can support up to 450,000 clients. Um, and we can actually support up to 30,000 access points. So we can scale quite heavily. We also support any hypervisor. And when I mean any hypervisor, I mean ESXi, as uh, Hyper-V, and um, KVM from Linux. We also support all main um, cloud vendors as well. So we support AWS, Google Compute, um, and the Azure as well, as well as Hyper-V. So it's designed for MSPs and small to medium businesses as well. We have a virtual or physical appliance. I'll be quite honest with you now, the virtual appliance is actually the cheapest way to go. And it just allows you to scale infinitely up to that 30,000 AP limit. So we've got consolidated wired and wireless management, a single wired and wireless network management system. However, it's not just monitoring or management that they say here. Sorry, it's not just monitoring. We can actually configure all of our switches as well. We can actually make the switches connect to the smart zone and download their configuration and pre-stage themselves without us needing to do anything more than just configure it in a smart zone once. We've got automated discovery and provisioning. So using our layer three and layer two auto discovery mechanisms, we can actually provision any switch. That ties into our wired and wireless management platform. And as I said, we've got a match scale. So we can either have 10,000 APs per controller, or if we cluster them, have up to 30,000 APs, with up to 60 gigabits of aggregate throughput, depending on the model. As I said, we, we support virtualization, so we can go into either a data center or 
you know, go into a small office if we need to. It doesn't matter. It's really up to you where you place the smart zone. We can even have ultra redundancy. Now, what I mean by that is anyone can have a controller that's redundant. That's fine. We can actually have a separate standalone cluster and a separate data center ready to go in the event that our main cluster fails. We can fail over automatically to that standby cluster with geo resiliency. We have completely customizable dashboards and we actually integrate with APIs as well. So one of our customers, and I can't say the name unfortunately, they're actually using APIs to their advantage. They're actually using a MDU, a multi-dwelling unit, and they're using an API to go into the smart zone and determine the end user's speeds dynamically based on their payment plan. So if out the box, everyone gets 100 meg, as an example, they can then say, well, actually, customer would like to pay a bit more. We'll give them 200 meg. And using their API, they're literally hitting a button on a dashboard. And I can see one of the guys is actually in the chat right now. Um, and they'll press a button and effectively the speeds will increase or decrease or even cut the person off if they don't pay their bill. So you can really use APIs to your advantage and really streamline the system. We have expedited troubleshooting. So we can actually, with our visual diagnostics, we can see at what point a device is failing. So we can see whether it's failing at the network layer, our core you know, infrastructure layer, or if it's failing at the AP layer, and really work out where to begin troubleshooting. Now, this is really beneficial when it comes to cost of ownership, because it means that we can actually diagnose problems very quickly and very efficiently without needing to work out, is it the AP, is it the network, or maybe it's something else over here? No, we can do a full client connectivity trace and work out where it's failing. We also have URL filtering at our disposal. It is a separate license, but it can allow us to do either categorization, whitelisting, blacklisting, or create our own custom rules. We also support Bing Safe Search and Google Safe Search, as well as um, Yahoo Safe Search as well. We, of course, support rogue AP detection like everyone else. So we can detect a rogue access point. We can band balance our access points and client connectivity, as well as doing load balancing and airtime fairness to ensure that every user has the same performance and experience when using the Wi-Fi, as well as guest services and capacity-based capacity based admission control. So what's new in Smart Zone? Well, those of you who've had the pleasure of dealing with me before, I've probably already got you to upgrade to version five. But if you haven't, We've got a brand new dashboard with Google Maps integration where we can use a Google Maps API key. We've got a simplified menu navigation structure. We've got a global filter in the top right where we can actually um, uh, look down to a specific zone or domain and work out exactly what's happening in that area. We've also got a fresh layout and user interactive with a very much changed and enhanced uh, GUI. So onto the demonstration. So I'm going to start with the Ruckus and Leash platform to start with. So bear with me while I just drag it on over. So hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, if you can't, let me know if you don't see the Ruckus and Leash dashboard. So from the very beginning, here is our dashboard. So we haven't unfortunately paid for the URL filtering license, so I'm getting a big warning. But that's actually a good thing. It means that it's going to warn me any time that we either don't have a license on our system or there's an error with our Ruckus and Leash system. Now, because these APs live in, in my little test lab in my office, um, I, I've actually got the APs not broadcasting any networks because otherwise I'd have horrendous performance. Let's start from the very beginning. Internet connectivity. Okay, well, it's going to tell you from the very get-go. Is my internet connected? Yep. Yeah. Do I have an IP address? Correct. Can I get to my gateway? Can I get to the DNS? And ultimately, can I get to the internet? So that if I do want to use the Ruckus Unleashed app, I can get to my application. I can actually connect to the AP. I've then got my Wi-Fi network, so I can actually do a global modification and you know change what the default logo looks like when I first join the network, or rather when I first log into Ruckus Unleashed. I've got any administrators that I may want to add or remove on the internal database. And then I can actually start modifying a guest network. So if I want to disable a guest a network, just click disable. So I'm going to enable this one, my guest network. Don't want it enabled? Disable it. Yes, I'm going to disable it. Do you want to confirm? Yes. And what you would see down here is any clients that are connected, you'd see their IP address and MAC address. The troubleshooting tab does a client connectivity trace. Now, because um, I don't have a client connected to the system at the moment, um, I won't be able to show this, but I, what I will be able to show is on our smart zone, the exact same process and what it looks like and how you can actually really begin troubleshooting. You can then also click on more and start doing a speed test. So if you, I'm sure you've all been there, customer rings up, Wi-Fi is rubbish, really getting really poor speed, okay. We can do a speed test and go, well, actually, Mr. Customer, between your device and the AP, you're getting this speed. Now, you're getting 300 megabits per second. So actually, there's not a fault with the wireless. There's a fault with the network. 
So again, it's an easy way to start troubleshooting where the bottleneck is. We can, of course, look at our client status and any traffic passed over the last hour. If I drill into our guest network, um, I can see that I've got guest access enabled. I can use guest pass, where I can actually allow a reception user to delegate access and give guest keys to my end users, or I can just use social login only. So if I was to create a brand new one and start from the very beginning, so just guest, going to be using guest access, social login only for this example, click next. You can then see that I support Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft, and WeChat. I also support Wi-Fi for EU. But I can now actually start customizing the logo, the message, the opacity. I can actually change the background color and change the main banner as well as the background. I can even preview this and go, well, actually, what's it going to look like on an iPhone 7? OK, it's going to look like this. OK, that renders really well. What's it going to look like on an iPad Pro? OK, well, it's going to look like this. So I can actually see natively what it's going to look like and know that I'm not going to have any experience issues. And then, of course, I can do my priorities, any access control that I would like to do. Maybe I'd like to rate limit it. I can do that from here straight away. Maybe I only want this to be on the 5 gigahertz band only. I can do that. I can even use the walled garden and say, well, actually, you can't get to any area other than these specified addresses before you authenticate. And then we come on to our access points. So our access points is very, very standard. So we can, of course, choose what channels we should use. And already, I've made a little mistake. So we shouldn't be using 1, 6, and 11 on the 2.4 frequency. So let me just change that now. I can then change what channel I should be using, what channelization I should be using. So I want to use 20 megahertz. And then I can either use, well, do I want to use a clear to send or request to send as my protection mode? I'm going to use CTS only in this example. I can then do the same with my 5 gigahertz band. Well, actually, I really should only be using 40 megahertz in the office. So let's do that. And you see that it's, it's cut off some channels automatically for me. So I can then click Finish. Great. So any AP that's connected to that, my master AP is now going to change. But again, I can see what SSIDs I'm broadcasting, what clients I have connected. I can see any events and alarms. So you can see that my AP was power cycled and had a cold boot. I can see any traffic that's processed. And then you'll notice that there's actually a little switching option down here. So this is a brand new feature to Ruckus Unleashed. This is the only one where you can only manage. So unfortunately, you can only manage the switches right now. But later down the line with an update, they will give you the ability to um, uh, sorry, manage them fully instead of just being able to monitor them. So from the get-go, I can see that I've got 56 ports on my switch, 43 are available, 13 are connected. I can see that out of 740 watts, I'm using 37 watts currently. And it shows my capacity. I can then see any events and alarms. I don't happen to have any. But you can also see that I've got a switch pending to join. So Ruckus Unleashed will actually try and natively scan your network. So if there's any Ruckus compatible switches, that may want to be part of the network. And if it does, you simply click Continue, pop in the username and password, and you can then monitor that switch. So if I look at my demo switch right now, well, I can go, well, actually, what does this all mean? If I click on the eye icon, I can see that anything in blue is linked to a Ruckus AP. If it's blue and it's just got a thunderbolt, then it means it's up, it's just detected POE. So if I go to this icon here, port 18, it's going to select that, sorry, port 20 even, it's going to select that port for me, and I can see that it's up, it's connected at one gigabit, it's using um, 2.9 watts of POE, and it's on VLAN 300. So it's a really powerful way to actually monitor your network and see what's going on. I can then look at my port trends. Oh, and by the way, the AP that I've selected happens to be an R600 running this firmware. I can then pick on another random port that's got POE going through it, so port 48. This happens to be for our ASCOM phone system that we also run in the office. And you can see that that's monitored as well. I can view any health statuses, so the CPU utilization of the switch, the memory utilization, and actually seeing if anything is up or down. So I can see they've actually got a fan slot that has no fan in it, and it's showing us down, or it's got a faulty fan. So it can, I can see that from the dashboard straight away. I can also see that my current switch is running at 49 degrees. So it's a little toasty in the office right now. I can also see any events. So I can see that severity is high. And it always does this because I've joined the network. So that's kind of a whirlwind tour of Ruckus Unleashed and what you can see. So it's a really simplistic, easy to use navigational system. If I now go to my smart zone, and this is our production smart zone in the office, I can do the same as what I can do with Ruckus Unleashed, but a little bit more. So on the troubleshooting side, if I select an access point, and I'm going to pick on the technical access point. Well, if I go to the very bottom, 
I can actually begin detecting my RF neighbors. I can see who's connect, who I can see from an RF point of view, see the signal to noise ratio, see if they're too loud or not. And now we've all been there. We've all gone to a site. They've had cablers in and the cablers either haven't finished labeling the ports or they've just not bothered labeling the ports at all. And you go, where the hell does this AP actually connect to again? Well, if we connect LDP neighbors, well, I can now see, well, actually, it's connected to Perdicon switch three. It's on this IP address on the switch. And by the way, here's the port it's connected to. So I can now walk up to that switch and find out where my AP is connected to. I can even then see the power requested. What I can then do, and this is where I'm gonna actually swap over to our demo controller in a moment, um, is show you what you can do with the terms of traffic and response. So let me just do that. John to our VS said demo. So you have to excuse it. We're doing some training at the moment. Um, so you're gonna see lots of different names pop up. So I'm gonna pick on my AP at my house, so my office AP. And what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna go to health status. So I can obviously see anything historical, that's great. I can do my capacity, packet captures. Well, let's look at real-time health status. Let's look at the latency between my access point in my house and the controller in the office. Okay, well, it's actually not too bad. It's four, four milliseconds delay on the five gigahertz band. Capacity, I, I've got a total capacity of 204 megabits per second. That's more than my internet connection can withstand. So that's really good. I've had a few connection failures, unfortunately, on the five gigahertz band. Um, and my airtime utilization is actually looking really low. So I can very quickly troubleshoot. If I really want to, I can stop this and go to traffic. And I can actually, again, see any historical traffic. That's all well and good. I can also then see my top clients, which is my laptop, the different types of devices we're using, as well as any, any applications that we've used. Now, I haven't actually enabled application visibility on my, my domain, but if you have, you'd be able to see it here. But what I can then do is go to real-time traffic. And let's begin. So I'm just gonna play a film from my media server at home. I'm just gonna make sure my phone's on mute so you don't get blasted Wallace and Gromit. That's apparently what the kids were watching last. And in a moment, what you're gonna see is that it's gonna spike. So my blink and downlink, currently it's only at 1.4 megabits per second. It's now jumped to 44 on the five gigahertz band. I can then see that I've got four clients connected, again, all on the four gigahertz band. Now I say, okay, well, that's great, but that's just showing me all clients. What about individual clients? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if I go down to clients and look at wireless clients, I'm gonna just look for my phone, so Alex Personal. So if I do the same again, I can look at health time, real-time real health status. Okay, well, my phone is currently connecting. It's gonna take a moment to load. I'm getting 60 signal to noise ratio. Perfect, that's exactly where it needs to be. My data rate is at about 56 kilobits per second. Okay, well, my phone's not actually doing anything at the moment because it's not playing a film. But that's good. What about traffic? Customer complains they're not getting any throughput on their device. Okay, well, well let's look at uplink and downlink. Again, gonna play a, a random film. I can now see that I've instantaneously gone up to 85 megabits per second. So, Mr. Customer, do you actually have an issue or is it a network issue? Because I personally think you're getting full connection to my AP right now. And then the other one that we all get is, my device will not connect to the network at all. Okay, well, let's do a troubleshooting session on that then. So if I was to start right now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect my phone from the Wi-Fi, and this is where I love live demos because it may not work, but here we go. There we go, I've disconnected. Okay, well, let's reconnect. Okay, well, I've connected to my SSID at home called Bear Network. Well, let's connect to the Perdicom SSID. So the Perdicom SSID is actually using VLANs. Okay, well, I can see that I've typed in the right username and password. Good, because I've got past frame two. I can actually go down and go, okay, well, I've connected to my data plane. Perfect. Okay. Oh, by the way, my IP address is 192.168.110.35. Okay, great. Oh, and by the way, it should in here show me what the VLAN ID is. By the way, you're in VLAN 110. Now, I don't use VLANs at my house, um, so this is turning all the way back into the office, but this actually le lets you troubleshoot where a connection's failed or not failed. More to the point, if I click on any of these li little red orbs, I can see that my phone's previously failed to get a DHCP response. Okay, well, that's a fault with my network, not my wireless connectivity. So again, it can save you time on site by actually troubleshooting exactly where the issue lays in your network. And that's kind of the smart zones party piece that I can trace anything and work out where it is. I can even do a packet capture as well. So that's what you can do with the troubleshooting. And of course, I can do multi-tenancy. So you can see that I'm actually doing some training today. So thanks guys, whoever's done that one, they've all done it. 
there you go, Ruckus Home. So it's not me. So I've got someone called Sergio on my training course. Um, they've got an AP called Sergio AP, and we're doing multi-tenancy. So if I logged in as Sergio, I would only see his connection. I'd only see his partner domain. As I'm a, logged as a main administrator, I can see everything. You can even see that we've got my home, I've got Gemma, and I've got Harry, my other colleagues. You also use the platform for testing. So you can see absolutely everything. You can even see what devices they've connect, got connected. I can even see that I've got my office AP and I've got two clients connected to it or four clients connected. I can see the VLAN they're connected to, the channel they're connected to as well. You can see every little bit of information about the system. So just gonna jump back to the PowerPoint slides. So that's our demos. Are there any questions at all? Feel free to type in the chat window in the Q&A and I'll answer them right now. Does the virtual smart zone and the smart zone controller have the same interface? Uh, yes, it does. So um, what I'll demonstrate now is, so this is actually our virtual smart zone. Um, so it's our demo smart zone here, and I'll show you that. That's a demo. It's a virtualized one. So it's got a cluster and control plane. It's a virtual smart zone. And you can see it's virtual smart zone high scale here. This is our smart zone 100, which is a physical appliance. Exactly same information. The only difference is that the, um, the smart zone 100 doesn't support multi-tenancy, whereas the virtual smart zone high scale does. That's the only real difference. Um, you can also buy a physical smart zone controller which supports high scale in addition. So hopefully, Bao, that answers your question. Yeah, so um, what happens when the main AP goes offline, Bao, um, in, smart, in the Ruckus Unleashed platform is, normally, you'd have more than one access point. Um, I've got two here. You can see one's a master, one's disconnected. Um, if this AP was online, you'd have a master and what, what they consider a slave. So if the master ever failed, the slave would take over the network. Um, can it be integrated with the Hawaii cloud? So um, I'm not familiar with the Hawaii cloud, but smart zone only is only compatible with ruckus uh, devices. Um, if you want to host the smart zone on a third party cloud solution, then we support AWS, Google Compute, um, and as Microsoft's Azure platform. Okay, Luke, um, Hughes, I see, see you've got, still got your hand up. Is there any more questions? Oh, in terms of failover, is that for the smart zone or for the Unleashed platform? Unleashed. Okay. So what happens is you've got a master AP. And then if you have more than one AP, you have what's known as a backup AP or a slave AP. So what will happen is, is if the master ever fails, the slave AP basically becomes the master. And you would log in with the same IP address. It actually acts as the master in terms of IP connectivity as well. And you can still manage the network from that slave AP. And that gives you enough time to um, replace the master AP and then put a new one back in service, at which point another master and slave will be elected. So Bao, I see that Bao's asked a question. He's got, is there cloud management for Unleashed? So yes, there is. You can use Unleashed Multisite Manager to manage multiple uh, Unleashed instances. Or what you can do is you can actually use the Ruckus Unleashed app, which allows you to manage up to 10 Unleashed sites from your mobile phone anywhere in the world. Um, Okay, so where does Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi sit? So um, interesting question. Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi is actually using Smart Zone underneath. So what that means is that Ruckus Cloud and Smart Zone have the exact same feature sets underneath. Ruckus Cloud Wi-Fi is deliberately kept a little bit behind Smart Zone so they can make sure the features are up to date and the UI is um, working correctly because the Cloud Wi-Fi has a different UI to the Smart Zone. So they're actually very comparable. Just at the moment, the smart zone platform is and always will have slightly more features as the cloud platform gets more developed. Um, but the cloud platform now supports switches as well. So they're kind of level pegging almost. Um, but if you need data plane access where you're tunneling, then that's only supported right now on the smart zone platform, but it is coming to Ruckus Cloud later in the year. So we've been told. Um, there is a cost of multi-site manager. Um, what I'll do, Ollie, is we'll take notes at the very end and one of the sales teams will get back to you um, with a price for it. Um, I'm just the engineer, so I actually don't know what the pricing is. Um, I only know list pricing, but someone will get back to you. Okay, so if there's no more questions, um, what I'll do then is I'll wrap up the presentation. So we do have some offers at the moment. So at the moment, Ruckus are offering free Ruckus Cloud Analytics. So up to 250 cust per sorry, per customer. What this means is that you can now actually man or rather view all the analytics online um, 
and see everything from airtime utilization. If there's a fault in the network, the actual analytics platform is intelligent enough to say, there's a fault, here's potential causes, here's how you can fix it. It's using machine learning and artificial intelligence. So it, it helps your IT teams find a fault before the customer is even aware of it. That's the idea behind it. And this is supported on Ruckus Cloud and it's supported on the Ruckus Smart Zone platforms. You've got robust reporting, informative dashboards, and you can literally report on anything. So I urge everyone to try it because it's free for a year. So you may as well and see how it benefits you and see what it can really do. It's being developed very heavily as we speak and there's more and more features coming every day. Um, as I've said, so we also have the free trial for the smart zone analytics. So that's slightly different. So you've got Ruckus Cloud Analytics and Smart Zone Analytics. The smart zone analytics is a different, is only up to 90 days trial, but it's 100 licenses. But again, that should give you enough flavor to kind of see what they're both about. They both actually display the exact same information, just Ruckus are trying to push Ruckus Cloud at the moment, so they've given you a year's worth of free analytics. And then we have our Ruckus Unleashed promo as well. So um, between now and December 31st, we've got special pricing. Um, if you if you order any Ruckus AP, um, Ruckus Unleashed AP with the prefix 9U1, you'll get a special deal and special pricing on that. There's no minimum deal size and there's no bundle requirements. Um, we'll share the link with you afterwards, terms and conditions about how to do that. Um, Mr. Hughes, I see you've asked a question about how do we get in touch with the sales rep. Um, you can actually just email sales, uh, I think it's info at purdy.com or hello at purdy.com. Um, what we'll actually do is we'll take your details and we'll pass it to our sales director at the end and he'll get one of the sales team to contact you directly. Um, and then we can begin answering any questions you may have. And that's the end of the demo, guys. So thank you all for watching. Um, here you go. If you'd like to ask any questions, then please email ruckus at purdy.com and we'll answer all your questions. Um, I'm going to stay around for a couple more minutes. And, and then if you've got any questions, we can answer them. With regards to slides, we'll, we'll be following up with all the slide deck that we've covered today. And there'll also be a video recording for everyone to watch as well. Um, and we can pass it back. No problem. Thank you for your time.